Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is uh, Snorri Westgaard and I'm the chairman of the Federation Humana People to People. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to talk to all of you today uh, and give you a greeting from the Federation Humana People to People called From People to People Examples from the Past One Year. This presentation was also shared with the General Assembly uh, that was held recently, earlier this month. What I would like to tell about in this presentation is first present the From People to People, which is our hallmark, and how the whole concept and the understanding is needed and the practice is needed more than ever. I would like to present how the project is a From People to People expression and then mention some of the projects and activities that we do in health, education, and also in second-hand clothes as examples of expression and practices of from people to people. To end this presentation, I will also read a greeting from Ukraine. From people to people, our hallmark needed more than ever. As most of you know, Humana People to People was started, or you can say was born out, of the anti-apartheid struggle in the 70s. We wanted to support the people who were fighting for independence, against racism, against colonialism, for a better world for all of us. It was about support, charitable support, from people in Europe to people fighting in Southern Africa. And first we concentrated our efforts to support the refugees from Zimbabwe who were in uh, Mozambique. After Zimbabwe got its independence, we started working in Zimbabwe itself, in Mozambique and other neighboring countries, the so-called frontline state, by supporting the people and government disease countries to create development and to show examples that this continue to uh, fight against apartheid in that time, Namibia and South Africa. We learned a lot by working with the people, building schools, building clinics, starting projects, and through all these experiences and being together with people, the From People to People was developed and became a hallmark. This is needed more than ever today. In the middle of the climate craze, which is raging across the globe, the increasing inequalities within countries and between countries, the pandemic roller coaster and the conflicts that we are experiencing in countries and between countries with wars, we can see that the need for developing people-to-people -people relationships and people-to-people -people practices is needed more than ever. In the, in the Federation Humana People-to-People, -people, we implement projects. Across, in, in our different member countries, we have many projects addressing important issues of our time. The project itself is a from people to people expression. A project is where people, is where our staff together with people in the community get together to do something, to change the lives of individuals and communities and together create a better future for all the people involved. The project is thus a base for creating necessary changes. The project is an operational field of action and everybody around can understand the whole concept of projects. Because you have a project team, you have the people participating in the project activities, and we have a clear goal and aim to reach. So all project types in Humana People to People, be it health, education, livelihood, agriculture, and so on, have the element of people being organized together in groups to act on their situation. Now I'll give some examples. The next example will come from our health projects and education projects. Now the first example is uh, total control of the epidemic. This is a very, very, you can say, one of our biggest examples of a whole movement built on the people and the people taking action and taking control of their own lives. The slogan was only and is, only the people can liberate themselves from AIDS, the epidemic. This was true in 2000 and it's true today. That time, 
we were kind of crazy to say that we can take control of the epidemic because nobody believed that it was possible. Today, that is the actual goal of the international community, is how to go the last mile to take con total control of the epidemic. So TCE has been an important part of influencing that policy and to showing that engaging the communities and the people was absolutely necessary to achieve total control of it, the epidemic. The World AIDS Day 2021 said, end inequalities, end AIDS, end pandemics, and argued that community involvement is a must to do so. We use our TC experience also in the fight against TB. TC has been present at every international AIDS conference since the beginning. There we have consistently presented the importance of striving for people to be in control of their HIV situation. Over the years, strategies have changed, but one thing has remained, the from people to people approach is absolutely necessary. The TC strategy of mobilizing people to take control and do it in close cooperation with local health systems and getting the medical treatment that is needed also works well when working to get in control of TB. Co-infection with both TB and HIV is an enormous problem. TB with HIV co-infection enhances the possibility of developing drug-resistant TB, so there are all reasons to address the two diseases simultaneously. At the upcoming International AIDS Conference, ADPP Mozambique will present their experiences with the so-called DOT+. Plus. TB and HIV co-infection continues to be a challenging health issue in Mozambique, where treatment completion among TB drug-resistant people with HIV is low. ADPP has gained capacity to implement large-scale TB response projects. DOT+, Plus is one of the interventions with promising results for the most vulnerable people faced with drug-resistant TB and HIV co-infection. The people-centered approach as DOT+, Plus, has shown effectiveness in increasing treatment adherence for TB and HIV. The reason why DOT+, Plus makes a difference is because it reduces the main barriers among people. Because community activists provide support in their homes by providing psychosocial support, they bring the treatment, monitor the treatment by using pillboxes, ensure the person go to all the checkups and educate the family members in how they best can support, which also helps to reduce stigma. TC experiences are essential in reaching the people who still don't know their HIV status. DFP Sambe will present in the session through the lens of community addressing context with strategies and interventions, the efficiency of index testing approach in community HIV case in the identification. The UNAIDS 95-95-95 strategy means that now 95% of people who are HIV positive in a country should know their HIV status. 95% of those who tested positive should receive ART, and 95% of those in treatment achieve viral suppression, meaning that the viral load is undetectable and they can no longer infect others. This is now how the international community seeks to achieve total control of the AIDS epidemic. In Zambia, they work with what is called index testing, which means that they identify people who are HIV positive, and then through them get the connection to people that they have been in contact with, either sexually or otherwise, so that their partners are, who are at risk of uh, being HIV infected also are tested. It's a targeted intervention and it's effective in the sense that it reaches those most at risk for HIV. So this is how they, they reach the last mile. Community index testing builds on close cooperation to all sides. You can imagine this of obtaining confidential information from a person who is HIV positive and then targeting these people with HIV testing demands utmost uh, care, 
confidentiality, respect, and, uh, and confidence from the community and from the people involved in the field offices so they can go ahead with this. And this is exactly what the TCE field officers are able to achieve because they have confidence from the community. They know, they show utmost respect and care in their, their communication and dealing with the community. And in that way, they are able to mobilize people to go for HIV testing. This is also a very good example on from people to people. So now I will tell, tell some examples from the education project. The Human People to People education projects have always started with the reality around us and engaging teachers and students to change the reality for the better. The elements of our education projects are the students, the group of students, their teachers and their program. There's always a program. Nothing new here. This has always been the characteristic of Humana People to People's education approach. What is new is the new elements in the education debate. For many, many years, the focus has been on ensuring that young people, children and young people, learn basic skills so they were ready for the labor market. What we can see now is that there's a growing recognition globally that quality education must include 21st century skills such as critical thinking, problem solving and working together. We need solidarity to fight against the inequality that is undermining our societies. Our, our children and young people need understanding that we depend on each other and that we need to take care of each other and the planet so that we together can address the challenges facing mankind, which is growing inequality, conflicts, war and climate crisis. In, uh, I will now mention a few examples of, of what, what we do in our uh, education projects. I think you all know our teacher training program, DNS, you know our PTG, you, you know our educational programs, our CADAM, but we also do other programs that uh, that are more community-based and other types of education projects. One is called Apoyar Ale, Help to Read. It's a model developed in Mozambique for engaging parents and the whole community in supporting primary education. So actually happening outside the school, but seeing good results and good impact on the learning levels of the children. A program in Angola where they have de de devised 40 simple sessions addressing STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This is used by the teacher training institutions to do in-service training in primary schools. And it's very popular among the teachers and students because they use available resources to do different scientific experiments. And it has been, become so recognized and famous that now even different ministers across the whole African continent have raised uh, showed interest in getting the STEM program to their countries. In many of our vocational schools, they have started new ways of training young people out in the community to reach more people, short courses in Malawi, Zimbabwe, Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau. And in that way, many, many more people can be reached through shorter courses and often including entrepreneurship training so that young people can start their own businesses and their own uh, uh, income generating activities. In, in uh, CADAM, we have an integrated and participatory planning and assessment system, which have now been recognized as an example of formative assessment in a spotlight report published by 100. CADAM was chosen among 14 other innovations, uh, among 129 submissions, as a good example of formative assessment. assessment. In connection with the UN General Assembly in New York in September, there will be a, a Transform Education Summit. And uh, it has been invited uh, policymakers, NGOs, and different organizations, and Humana People to People will participate to present our models and experience in transformative education model. Now I will say something about the second and closed system and how that is a response to a global problem. The problem to address is that the textile production is hard on the natural resources. Here you can see a graph. 
So 10% of all CO2 comes from textile production. 80% of that CO2 is generated in the production phase and 20% of all water pollution comes from textile production. That's why recycling and more than ever reuse is very, very important to address these issues. Our second-hand clothes system is more and more needed. The clothing production have doubled in the past 15 years and each piece of clothes is used one-third less than 15 years ago. This is a tendency in, 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 uh, in consumerism and the financial system we have now. So, so more and more people are getting aware that one way they can support uh, the environment or reduce the carbon footprint is to reuse clothes. So the demand is getting bigger and, and uh, the success of the reuse of second-hand clothes is also getting bigger. Our second-hand clothes system promotes reuse as the best use of clothes. And uh, this is very good uh, aligned with the EU policy that is coming out, or which has come out, which will be implemented from 2025, that all textiles have to be collected separately as much as possible for reuse, promotion of circular economy, keep resources in the economic system, producers, sellers are responsible for collection. The sorting centers are from people to people enterprises. The sorting centers have a clear task to sort the clothes so that each item finds the right user, then reuses as is best. Our sort, sort, sorters in the sorting centers who have been qualified and educated over six months they learn how to find the right clothes for the Africa, right clothes for the different markets in Europe and other markets so that every collected item is utilized optimally. So this is very, very important work and it's a very, very important people-to-people -people activity. The second and clothes system provides 20 to 25% of the funding for our social project. This is in itself is a huge people-to-people -people act. This funding is what can make many of the other projects that we are doing, that we raise partnerships for, work. 20,000 employees reaching almost 10 million people with social projects and almost 30 million people through the second and growth system. This is a huge system of people contributing, benefiting, participating in this, uh, this circle. As we know, this 20 to 25 funding from the second hand clothes is not just money, it is the long term support to our development strategies, strategies we have seen examples of in the previous slides. In many, many African countries, the second hand clothes provides business and livelihood for many, many people, especially women. So now we are going to zoom in on how from people to people in second hand clothes express itself in other people and more. Other prepared clothes in Angola received clothes as donations from members in Europe. They work with 16 sales agents who sell the clothes in eight provinces. The customers of the 16 sales agents are small, mostly informal traders who buy 45 kg bales and sell the, the clothes in market stalls. Other prepared clothes in Angola supports those small scale clothes traders to establish formal businesses. They get personal ID, develop business plans, get a tax registration and become part of the formal economy. It gives them better business skills and the businesses are better protected legally. The traders are often women who support their families through the trade and create jobs for their family members. The second and closing time of war, examples from Ukraine. We have all got to know the map of Ukraine since the war started in February 2022. Here we will give an example of how from people to people is present among 900 employees suddenly hit by war. What you hear now is from a report from the country development director of Humana Ukraine. But first, an overview of the shops. Here you can see all the divisions Kiev, Odessa, Dnepr, Dlonsk, Kharkov, Lov, in total 121 shops. These closed shops were all closed 
at the onset of the war. But if you see in the second column, you can see that now a number of operating shops that have started again is 94. Number of non-operating shops is 27. That means we hope that they may be operating again soon. And number of closed shops is four. I will now read the report from Ukraine. Keep. Keeping a company in a war is an incredibly difficult task, but an extremely necessary one for us. We were not prepared either physically or psychologically for the fact that a full-scale military invasion of our country would begin, so the outbreak of the war came as a complete surprise to us. On February 24th, all shops, a warehouse and an office stopped working due to the threat of hostilities in Kyiv and its environs. Some of our employees urgently left the city. In this situation, information about the location and condition of our employees was very important for us. On February the 25th, a chat was created in Viber where all company employees were connected. In this chat, we exchanged information every day, made general announcement for everyone, help with accommodation, search for housing for those who left for other cities, provided moral support, promptly responded to the situation in our shops after shelling, damage to windows, entrance, etc. Thanks to the decision of the founders, in the first days of the war, employees were provided with financial support, which made it possible to provide people with money for movement. Our second most important task was the preservation of our material assets, namely shops, a warehouse, and cars owned by the company. All shops were closed. The money was handed over to the bank. The premises were put under a security alarm. The cars were placed in a relatively safe place. We have optimized our expenses, set priorities in the management of the company. The first shops opened on March 23, after a month since the outbreak of hostilities, and all 45 shops have been open since April 28. Never. From the first day of hostilities, all possible actions were taken to preserve the company as a project. The work of all shops was suspended on the 24th of February 2022. Some employees left their place of permanent residence since first day, fearing for their own lives to small villages to the western part of the country and abroad. The remaining staff made every effort to quickly prepare the shops for downtime. The collection of all balances at the cash desks was prepared. The goods were removed as far as possible deep into the trading floors or into the warehouse. The operation of security alarms were checked from March 11th to April 2nd, the work of all company shops were, was resumed. Shops were opened gradually based on the safety of staff and customers, the possibility of collection of banks, as well as the return of staff to their places of residence. The company has developed and communicated to all employees instructions and recommendations on the actions of employees during martial law and emergency situations. Karki. Since the beginning of the war, our company has been forced to suspend the work of shops and offices. The safety of employees and their families, as well as the retention of staff and stable payment of wages, have become a priority for us. Our goal today is not income, but maximum consolidation on three focuses. Maintain a network of shops, pay taxes and wages to our workers because it is the health of our economy and the foundation of the future, Help wherever we can be useful, technology, experiences, finances. We provide fast, accessible and relevant communication. We have daily supportive, useful operational content regarding the company in the information channel for employees in Viber. For those who were forced to leave Kharkiv, we offered employment in the Humana chain of shops in other regions. There were practically no problems with office workers since we tested the remote work format during the pandemic. Employment of employees is different, depending on the functions and needs of the enterprise. In this difficult time for Ukraine, business cannot stand aside. Huma, Kharkiv paid 
UAH 855,600 income tax to the state budget by result of previous year. We are psychologically stable, everyone is motivated, we have become united, ready to help each other, and this means a lot. Yes, it is not easy emotionally, but the belief in victory and the fact that after a while our country will flourish again will be renewed even better keeps us going. We are making every effort to retain all employees and keep this most important capital in full working readiness before the full recovery of business in our city and the country. With those words from Ukraine, I say thank you for your attention, thank you for the participation, and see you soon again.